The Panzer Banwan 302, or shortly PBV 302, is returning to military service to fight in Ukraine after waiting in storage for 10 years. Examining this nearly 60-year-old infantry fighting vehicle, or IFV for short, may offer a fine chance to analyze the current perspective on modern warfare. As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the PBV 302 and questioning the general point of view about the recent conflicts. The PBV-302 was an impressive IFV in its time, but we can say that it's now outdated. Still, on May 29, 2024, Sweden announced all remaining PBV-302s waiting in storage for a decade would be donated to Ukraine. Do these vehicles have any chance of being effective against the Russians and surviving against drones on modern battlefields? Is the PBV-302 being reborn for fighting or glorious but unavoidable death? Before seeking answers, let's briefly look at its history and features. In the late 1950s, the Swedish army required a tracked IFV. So, the hulls of some STRV M41 light tanks were converted to PBV 301s. Yet, it was an interim solution and the vehicle was far from answering the Swedish army's future operational requirements. Sweden had already begun the works on an indigenous tank leading to the development of the STRV-103 and the PBV-301 would not be able to follow it in the field. So, in 1961, Stockholm awarded a contract to Hägglund Osonev, today's BAE Systems Hägglund, to develop a new full-tracked amphibious armored vehicle called PBV-302. The first of two prototypes was completed within a year. The company was awarded an initial production contract for 700 PBV 302s in 1963. The Swedish Army took delivery of the first serial production vehicle in 1966. The PBV 302 was never exported. The production ceased in 1971 after 647 IFVs were delivered. The Swedish Army kept the PBV 302 in active service until 2014 then stored the remaining approximately 180 vehicles as reserves. Now, they are reactivated to be sent to Ukraine. The PBV 302's hull is all welded rolled steel. The 23mm thick front section is resistant up to 20mm projectiles. The hull sides are double skinned above the tracks, which increases protection against high explosive anti tank munitions. During the UN operations in the former Yugoslavia, the Swedish Army fitted the PVV 302s with additional passive armor to their turrets and hulls to enhance battlefield survivability. Also, spot liners and a better fire extinguishing system were added inside the vehicles. This variant, called the PBV 302C, also had additional external stowage boxes and a modified exhaust outlet. The driver sits at the front in the center. The commander is on the right. The gunner sits inside the one-person turret to the left. The positions of the last two crew members are slightly behind the driver. The infantry enter and leave the PBV-302 via two large doors in the rear of the hull. The turret with no stabilization houses the 20mm Hispanus Suiza HS-804 cannon, whose Swedish designation is 20mm Okan M47D. They are former guns of the retired Saab 29 Tunans. The cannon has an elevation angle between minus 10 to plus 50 degrees and a cyclic rate of fire of 500 rounds per minute. It is fed via 3 belts and 10 magazines. Each belt holds 135 high explosive rounds and each magazine holds 10 armor piercing rounds. The effective ranges of high explosive and armor piercing munitions are 2000 and 1600 meters respectively. The gunner's monocular sight can magnify the ground target's view eight times. For aerial engagements, the turret hatch is opened and the gunner uses the open sights mounted on the weapon. A 7.62mm mag machine gun, whose Swedish designation is KSP M58, can be attached to over the 20mm gun for training purposes. Over the top of each side of the troop compartment is a hydraulically operated hatch controlled by the commander allowing the infantry to use their small arms inside the vehicle when opened. 
The power pack is horizontally mounted under the floor. This design offers a spacious interior within a compact design, but it complicates field repair and maintenance compared to vehicles with conventional layouts. The exhaust pipe immediately behind the driver is short, which may cause the exhaust fumes to enter into the crew compartment. The PBV302C variant's exhaust pipe is fitted with a large horizontal extension to solve this problem. The M70 type tracks have a life of over 10,000 km. They offer 20% better traction on soft soil than earlier tracks. The PBV302 has a low ground pressure of 0.6 kg per square centimeters and a high power to weight ratio of 20.74 horsepower per ton. It gives the vehicle excellent cross-country mobility, especially when operating over summer bog and winter snow. The IFV is fully amphibious with a water speed of 8 km per hour. The PBV302 has no CBRN system, although one could be fitted. It can be used as a cargo carrier or ambulance with minor modifications. The vehicle can carry 2000 kg of load or 4 to 6 stretchers. The PBV302 has the Stills Liednings Panzerbahn 13021 Battalion Brigade Level Command Post, L Liednings Panzerbahn 13022 Artillery Forward Observer, but the Lilliplatz Panzerbahn 13023 Battery Command Control, Rodeolink Panzerbahn 13024 Communications, Pias Rekok Nosiering Panzerbahn 13025 Battery Reconnaissance, and Hull Transport Panzerbahn 13026 Ambulance Variants. Two more vehicles, Baringings Band 182 Armored Recovery Vehicle and Bru Band 941 Bridge Layer were developed using the PBV302 chassis. The PBV302 also shared many components with the IKV91 tank destroyer. Heglund Ossanel worked on a PBV302 variant with the 312 horsepower Volwood THD 100C engine and the stabilized 25mm Erlikon KBA automatic cannon to replace the previous generation of the vehicle. Yet, the Swedish Army preferred the CV9040 instead of it. The PBV302 has a three-person crew consisting of a commander, gunner and driver and can carry eight infantry. The vehicle has a length of 5.35 meters, a width of 2.86 meters and a height of 2.5 meters. Its combat weight is 13.5 tons. The 280 horsepower Volvo Penta model THT 100B turbocharged diesel engine provides a road speed of 66 km per hour. Its range is 300 km. The IFV can negotiate 0.61 meter vertical steps and 1.8 meter trenches. The PBV302 has one 20 mm Hispano Suiza HS804 cannon. As you may see, the PBV302 is an old-school IFV, unsuitable for modern combat requirements. Of course, no one expects that it would bring a significant change in the war in Ukraine. Yes, the armed forces of Ukraine need some game-changer weapon systems, but some ordinary ones too. War is a team effort. It requires ordinary players as well as superstars. Operating the PBV-302 as a frontline IFV would probably cause disastrous outcomes. Still, it would be worthwhile in battle taxi and cargo transport roles. Thanks to its low ground pressure and high power to weight ratio, this vehicle can provide necessary mobility, especially in muddy spring and fall or snowy winter. Many might say that the PBV-302 has no chance against kamikaze drones or unmanned aerial vehicles. But neither does the other highly fancy and expensive modern armored vehicles. In this regard, the PBV-302 is not any lesser than them in battle taxi and cargo transport roles. The effectiveness of kamikaze drones and unmanned aerial vehicles in recent conflicts has caused a problematic perspective. Yes, they are changing the combat doctrines. But are these flying robots transforming the battlefield? It might be too soon to claim that. We should accept that kamikaze drones and unmanned aerial vehicles played a critical role in the Azerbaijani victory in the 2020 Second Nagorno-Karabakh War. But they were not alone. Also, Armenia was unprepared for such warfare. In the early stages of Russian invasion of Ukraine, the attackers were not also ready. However, the Russians seem to have overcome the first shock. 
using more advanced electronic warfare systems and recalibrating the air defense systems have reduced the effectiveness of kamikaze drones and unmanned aerial vehicles. Besides, without comparison, it would be hasty to claim that a new weapon system has outdated the others. Some sources claim that within a month and a half, nearly 140 A-10s flew 8,624 missions and destroyed over 950 tanks, 1,000 artillery pieces, 1,300 trucks, 280 military structures and 50 Scott launchers in the 1991 Gulf War. And only 5 Warthogs were lost. Of course, these numbers might be exaggerated. All sides of war always magnified their success as propaganda. Naturally, the Russians and Ukrainians are not exceptions. Their claimed numbers achieved by kamikaze drones and unmanned aerial vehicles in over two years of war are still not as bright as the A-10s. So how can we claim that the flying robots make the Thunderbolt 2 outdated? The USA and its allies had to leave Afghanistan and Iraq. Did they not have enough unmanned aerial vehicles? Or did the Afghani and Iraqi resistance achieve it thanks to these flying machines? After the machine gun and tank were invented, many military planners claimed that the era of inventory ended. Yet, the Brits kept winning victories in the Falklands, Afghanistan and Iraq by bayonet charges. The RPGs and AT-3 Sagar anti-tank missiles gave hell to the Israeli tanks during the 1973 Yom Kippur War. So, many military planners claim that the era of tanks closed. On the other hand, Sharon crossed the Suez Canal with tanks and turned total destruction into a victory. So, we intend to believe that it's too early to give kamikaze drones and unmanned aerial vehicles such high praise. The world needs more time to analyze the situation correctly. Earlier we asked, is the PVV-302 being reborn for fighting? or glorious but unavoidable death. In his famous speech, Patton said no one ever won a war by dying for his country. He won it by making the other poor, not so clever one die for his country. Of course, we changed some words due to YouTube limitations. Kamikaze drones and unmanned aerial vehicles seem to be the best solution not to die for your country. Nevertheless, no one has also ever won a war without being willing to risk their lives for their country. Neither Russians nor Ukrainians can win this war without heavy losses. So, unfortunately, a glorious but unavoidable death is a part of this war. And the PBV-302 will have no better or lesser chance in battle taxi roles in Ukraine. Kamikaze drones and unmanned aerial vehicles can destroy them. So, should Ukrainians not send their troops to the front line? Which nation gives up its sovereignty and independence due to its enemy's large number of kamikaze drones and unmanned aerial vehicles? So, even though the PVV-302 would not be a game-changer in Ukraine, it would still play a crucial role. According to our analysis, this IFV is reborn to do its duty properly and to die gloriously when necessary. Of course, our arguments are open to criticism. We're waiting for your counter-arguments in our comment section. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.